Part of the fun for me as I make knives is when somebody has like a special request or they say, hey, can you do something with half of this half of a lawnmower blade? Uh, I really like the, the kind of improvisational um, knife making better than I like just grinding out the same pattern over and over again or forging the same pattern over and over again. So I've kind of been transitioning to doing more um, custom work for lack of a better term. Um, for instance, uh, this knife is the last one I finished. Um, the guy that requested this said, well, I want something that's going to be usable in the woods, but kind of look like it would fit in at a Civil War reenactment. And uh, I designed it, and then after I designed it, he changed his mind and wanted something else, so I made him another knife. Um, but someone saw this design and liked it and wanted it, so I uh, made it, and this is going to ship out today. But to me, there's just something fun about taking a piece of steel. Um, you know, I don't know what kind of steel this is, but I know that it works as a lawnmower blade, and I don't have to make like some crazy art knife or something. I can make something like this. This is a parang that I uh, actually probably more of a bolo looking at it. Um, but I bought this from uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and it was dated to around World War II, um, and I think I know where this is made because after I bought this, a few months later, I went to the Philippines uh, to a small village that's making uh, bolos, uh, and the, I have some other examples of their work, but the way this handle is done, and it's made out of buffalo, and kind of just the overall look of the knife is very similar to some of the other knives that I got from there. But uh, I kind of like these uh, knives where you take a, you're given a piece of steel and you have to do something with it, and you have to make something usable. And so what I plan to do is take this and use all of the um, fun and design and uh, skills that it takes to make this and turn this lawnmower blade into a usable and neat looking blade. The first thing I usually do is kind of figure out what needs to go and what can stay. I'm going to take this top edge off. Um, I'm not going to leave the hole. And so I think I'm going to make a parang. I think this would work well as a parang style knife. Um, and then obviously this hole isn't going to be there eventually. So let's see what we can do. might be too tall so I'm probably going to grind a little bit of uh, metal away after I get some curve built in and some taper. Now 
I'm just going to bend the handle down uh, just a little bit. You'll see why when I go to put the handle on. Now I have to uh, anneal this, meaning uh, I've heated it up to non-magnetic. And now I'm going to let it kind of cool slowly. So I'm going to put some insulation on top of it and it'll cool for several hours before it's at room temperature again. That just helps uh, helps make the rest of this process easier um, for lack of a better explanation. Okay, we are annealed. And the next step uh, is gonna be, I have, I have some finishing stuff to do on this. I need to, it's pretty darn flat, but I'm gonna, I am gonna surface grind it a little bit. And I'm gonna take this tang down to the diameter that I want to use um, for the handle. Now for the maker's mark. So it's basically ready for uh, the quenching step and you know the basically the start of heat treatment. Now what I've got here in this jar is uh, furnace cement and I don't know for sure that this is going to work with this steel because um, I don't know what the steel is. Some lawnmower blades are made from the wrong kind of steel to be able to get a what's called a Hamon line, H-A-M-O-N. Um, but I don't really care because the reason I'm putting this on here is so that I have a uh, differential temper of the blade so that it's soft there but or soft up here where the where I'm painting on the clay but hard along the edge and the reason I do that is so that I don't have this uh, problem that so many uh, parangs have and that's that they can break off here where the where the uh, Oh, what's that called? Where the stick tang meets the handle. Um, so hopefully having a little bit of softer steel in that area will remedy that problem. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting on a nice even coat and then just for kicks and giggles I'm just going to put some uh, parts on here where it kind of dips down a little bit. Uh, just just a little bit so that this line isn't so straight. If if this is the right kind of steel and I get a homone, this will make kind of a neat little effect on the blade. You'll see it if I can get it to polish out right and all that. So now uh, it's time for the heat treat. I have a little rack in there that I built, and uh, I just I won't be able to fit the blade in between the rack this time because of the stub. But I'll lean it against theirs, and we'll let that heat up to uh, non-magnetic, and then quench it. Okay, here goes. I've sanded this blade to uh, 240 grit and before I go any higher on that I just kind of want to check do a little test here and see if uh, my hormone line is going to show up. I know it's in there and I know the differential temper worked but I just want to see if it's worth going to the extra trouble to uh, polish uh, and get and try to bring out that hormone line. So what this is is um, ferric chloride etchant solution that I've diluted uh, four parts water to one part uh, the etchant solution and I've got a glass container obviously I've got gloves on and I'm just going to pour a little of this over there and uh, I'm not uh, doing this very scientifically right now I just want to see if that hormone shows up and what this is doing is it's oxidizing that metal as it's sitting there and uh, it appears it's showing up. It's it's not really scientific how long you leave that in there. It's kind of kind of depends on whatever steel you have, how hard it is, and the dilution of your uh, your solution. So 
but you do have to you do kind of want to get a real good coating and then every once in a while I take one of these makeup pads and just kind of rub and you see that that hormone is going to show up and that's all I wanted to know is is it is it going to be worth it for me to take the time to sand this up to a high enough grit so that that really jumps out and I think it is going to be worth it so now in order to get this to come out it's at 240 grit now I'm going to take some of this 330 grit and and get all of the 240 grit marks out I'll probably go from about mid blade down rather than going all the way up because um, it you know it's gonna it's gonna look rougher up here and I kinda like that and really the only part that is crucial to get is that transition between the super hard steel and the soft steel so I'll go 330 all the way up to 1500 grit and then we'll come back and redo the etch and because I know you're gonna ask why hand sand uh, because the, I don't have belts that go much higher than 330 and if you use a buffer um, for some reason a buffer rubs that line out real well and you can't really get it back after that so once I decided that I'm going to do a home own line then it's hand sanding in this case uh, the problem being that this is a convex edge so I can't use a sanding block or anything it's all like literally fingers and sandpaper and a little WD-40 so I've re-etched it um, you can see there's definitely a difference now how much of that is going to be how well that's going to pop is going to be uh, something we'll have to see here so what I do is I take a little of this uh, flits metal polish and one of these makeup pads and we'll kind of rub some of that oxidation off and see how how well that wants to pop out of there it's coming a little bit more oh yeah that's looking good So what does the um, ability of the lawnmower blade here to form a hormone tell us about what kind of steel it was? Well, uh, if you read on the internet, you'll see people mention like 1060, 1075, uh, 1080, and then 5160. Um, but uh, I've, I've played around with different steels and I've tried some hormones on some different steels and it, it does not work like this. You don't get that sharp of a line on steels like 01 or 5160 that are uh, through hardening or deep hardening steels. So that there, um, that nice hormone kind of tells me that this was probably a uh, 1060, 1075, uh, 1080 or even 1090 steel, but look at that, it's beautiful. Okay, that turned out really, really nice. I think uh, I'm gonna make a uh, brass, it's not really a guard, but a little brass uh, piece up here at the front and uh, solder it on. So that has to be made out of this brass bar and I have to fit this to that. I mean, it, this is a pain in the butt, but it'll really add, I think. So now it's time to start kind of assembling the handle. Uh, this is going to be a stick tang, so I've, uh, you know, next to the right next to the handle, I'm going to have uh, some color just uh, so that if I set it down or something in grass, it'll stand out real well. It's kind of bright orange, 
This part's kind of a pain in the butt because uh, I don't have like super precise machines to make all of this stuff. So a lot of this has to be hand fitted and um, so that it fits perfectly. And then, you know, a little file here, a little file there so that things rest up flush the way they're supposed to. And uh, it'll all be epoxied. And then eventually when I get everything assembled, I'm going to drill pins through all the way through the handle material and through the tang just so that there's an extra um, mechanical uh, fastening as opposed to just using epoxy for this. I've uh, glued the rest of the handle up and I put a little pin all the way through the handle and through the tang just to secure everything. Um, now it's time to grind the handle. It's a little bit of a pain to hit that tang, but if you draw everything out first, you can get it uh, pretty precise. finished. This is a uh, parang made out of a lawnmower blade and uh, I've even got a little hamon line on there. I'm real happy with the way the balance turned out. Um, in my mind it's perfect. I didn't put a traditional parang handle on there because um, I don't like the way they perform for me. Um, but I did put a, a longer handle on so that if you wish you can you can choke back and really swing for the fences. Um, this one has the added benefit of a nice uh, rounded choke up point so you can get in and do fine work. Uh, it's got the feature um, that I like on a knife, the guard uh, goes down at an angle so that you can put your thumb on top for um, doing other kinds of work and then you know you can always do this sort of business. Uh, and then you know it'll work well with a reverse cut and all those sorts of things. So